<laughs> you can and, call it Frankfurt. Okay. <laughs> and he's running a company, uh, some tech work, and he was introduced in 2012 in the WordPress community by a friend. And he is uh, very proud working with the applications and various industries, IT services, cloud consulting, and leading an online radio stations. And also, he started at the age of 20, right? Yeah, the first company I founded in exactly. 20. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have a fellow friend from the WordPress community and give a big applause. Thank you. Thank you for my great introduction. Thank it's a pleasure to be here. First of all, there is an amazing weather here. I'm so happy to be here after staying in cold Germany. The weather is really cold here. You know, when I, when I was shopping for the trip, I bought cold clothes and I was like, why? And then I saw the weather. Grad, this is an amazing weather here. Anyways, let's begin, guys. So your brand's success is not measured by amount of money uh, a company has already made, but it is measured by your company will make this year. How many new users, correction, how many new paying users you will get this year? Today, I will take you to the journey of website auditing and conversion optimization. So let's begin. Looks like I don't have mouse connected. One second, guys. Sorry for the interruption. All right. Let us begin. So your mouse works, I hope. No. Never mind. Let's do it without mouse. So my name is Vineet Talwar. I'm the founder of Some Tech Work. We are focused around getting your website and app done. And mostly we are consulting the various ventures right now and to improve their online presence. How many of you are business owners here? OK. And how many of you are SEOs here? SEOs? Only one, two, three, four? OK. Very few people, no problem. And how many of you uh, manages their own servers? Pretty few people. I'm surprised, but let's see. OK, let's proceed. So first of all, well done WordCamp Valencia for organizing this amazing WordCamp. I would, I would suggest that you should give a shout out to the organizers, organizers to organizing this amazing WordCamp. You can use this hashtag and say that they are doing amazing work. All right, so this is a typical website looks like in 2022. First of all, I'm landing on a website. I see a lot of banners, oh, like, okay, this is like essential cookie, performance cookie, that cookie, this cookie. I'm like, nah, I don't want it, I close it. And then suddenly a support widget pops up in the bottom. I'm like, no, I don't want support. I want to see the website first. And then suddenly me, you figure out, OK, there's a video playing in background. What is that going on? <laughs> and then you somehow figure out to close it, and a newsletter pop-up happens. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Can I even browse the website? I ended up closing the website because I get frustrated. And I'm trying to remember why I came here for the first place, and this is my reaction. <laughs> so, basically, let's start with talking about buttons. Amazing creatures. There are like three types of people. Some people who press the button once, some people don't press it at all, and some people will press it so much that it would make the traffic go faster. Increasing or pushing these buttons frequently is direct to, directly proportional to the level of frustration the users have. And guess what? You should definitely not do this. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll make people get angry. See, your visitors do not have patience at all. Your goal is to have a better time to interactive than this. Thing is, interactivity of your website impacts, impacts rage clicks. If your website is fastly interactable, you will not have rage clicks like you see with the buttons, right? User expect experiences to happen within the 1.3 seconds of their first visit. If uh, that doesn't happen, they will start making rage clicks and therefore you have more bounce rate. See, a bad website has a measurable business impact. Don't let your users wait uh, because they don't have time. 
People want information fast and now. They don't want to sign up here for your newsletter as soon as they get on your website. You should let users browse few pages first before you show them a newsletter widget or anything like that, right? So thing is, Google loves user experiences. Like you see that um, uh, there are some few tweets from Google. They are talking about uh, user interactions. See, SEO is not a black magic. Some aspects of SEO is relevant to high quality content, content accessible to search engines, and good SEO signals. And the core web vitals lies under the last category for user experience inter improvement. A website is never done. As a developer, you thought, I built the website. OK, my job is done. No, it's never done. There's always something you need to fix there, always. If you, if you have some time, just try to go to web.dev or any page speed insights. See the test. You will see what kind of problems your website has. Even my websites are not perfect. Every website is not perfect here, right? So you should uh, continuously improve your website, and that's what your website auditing is. But how do I fix my website? What are the different measures that I need to take to improve my website that would make my website flawless or awesome? So let's see. There are five pillars of website auditing, a performance, a security, accessibility, SEO, and UI UX. We won't talk about more of the point here, but we'll focus mostly on UI UX because this is a design-focused conference, as, uh, uh, as I've been told here. But we'll take a look at the stuff a little bit so that we have some context about website auditing. First step, uh, security. Uh, somebody told me, WordPress core is insecure. Um, I think some of you might be feeling angry after you see this. But guess what? This is untrue. WordPress comes as a package for you to get started. WordPress is not responsible for how you plan or handle your website. It is you who is responsible for your website. See, if a car is met with an accident, it's not car's fault. It's the fault of the driver. So you are on the driving seat, and guess what? You are the weakest link. All right. Are you secure, first of all? There are, um, you need to check if your website is secure or not. There, there are some nice resources here. You can take a look. And um, uh, for you guys, to re for your reference, in the end, I'll be putting a QR code in this slide where you can download all the slides. So my suggestion is just sit back and relax. You, will be, you, will, you can download all the slides in the end. OK? So security headers. So there are some awesome resources. These are some awesome resources available. And installing an SSL is not the only thing you need to do. My suggestion is take a look at securityheaders.com. You will see what kind of ranking your website have. Let me tell you an irony. I was exploring one website. It's a security company uh, in Germany. I think I don't want to take the name just for the stuff. They are focused around the security stuff. Guess what? I saw their website was ranked as F. And they're selling the security solutions. Means they are responsible for all the attacks, XSS attack, and all sort of security related attacks. They, they are prone to that. But you should not uh, ignore the aspect of security for your website. Guess what? Take a look at these sites and try to improve your stuff. Okay? You can do. You can take a look at WP Scan also um, for for penetration testing. I would suggest to buy the plugins. Never use any null code. See, these developers are working amazing stuff. You should. You will. In, you will support them by buying those plugins. Your null code will have malware also. So do not do that. And also audit your users. Increase add two-factor authentication and these kind of stuff. So there are other stuff like uh, web application firewalls and stuff like that also, okay? And don't tell me you're not on Git yet. Please, please, please host your code on Git. That is definitely suggested. Next topic, performance. So. <laughs> let's talk about game of, um, one time what this telemarketing guy was calling me. Uh, like, hello, sir, I would like to sell you these kind of services. I, I have a credit card. I'm like, um, I don't get it. What? Um, you know, um, I have a credit card. Um, I was taking so much time to respond. The guy got so frustrated. You know what? I made a telemarketing guy frustrated, and he shut down the call. And guess what? This is what your website is doing. If it is running slow, your website will have same kind of impact, and they will definitely go away. Your bad speed will have less download, less conversions, uh, and therefore your customers will go away. 
Speed is one of the ranking factor in Google right now. As you guys know, Google rolled out Core Web Vitals in May 2021. 21, I think, yeah, 21. Um, okay, so Google wants you to the speed up. So there are three factors of Core Web Vitals, loading, LCP, interactivity, and stability. Loading means how quickly your page is loading. Interactive means how soon you can interact with the page. And stability means how stable the page is when it is loading. For example, try to load your website once on a small 3G connection. And you'll be like, oh wait, I don't have a 3G connection. How do I do that? You know what? You can do that in your Google Chrome. When you can inspect element and see it throttle your network connection and you will get the idea how slow your website is loading. Please think about experience for those people also. Okay? See, performance is not only one of the focus points of this talk. I've covered this topic already in my previous WordCamp talks, but we will focus more on UX. So I'll skip most of the points here, but just talk about some resources that could use, you could use to test your website. You should make your users happy, not Google Lighthouse happy. Perfect 100, 100 on 100 is awesome, but guess what? Are your users getting what they need? You should also focus on that. And that's what we will focus more on this, these slides. And uh, all these uh, tools like Lighthouse and et cetera, they are more like a simulation. You don't get real-time uh, data, like how your users are feeling. You should always think about that also first. So if you're not getting 100 on 100, don't worry. That's fine. Don't stress about that. And if your boss is pushing you for the 100 on 100, tell them, that, show, me the, show him this slide. And show, me, show him this part of the video when this goes live on WordPress TV. OK, accessibility. Again, we are not focusing much on that. There's, these are some nice resources. Uh, in Lighthouse Test also, there is a part called accessibility, and they're giving you uh, some information. These are some best practices. You can also take a look at that. And A11Y project is also amazing, and they're providing a checklist. OK, so let's see the next part, which is an SEO. Is your site reachable in Google, and how good it is doing? See, use any website crawler and check your internal link validation capabilities. So for example, how your internal links are doing, how many 404s are there, is there a backlink properly done or not. You can use this thing called Screaming Frog and crawl your website and see how it is doing. Screaming Frog is an amazing tool I would recommend. Take a look at that. And guess what? That is not how SEO is done. Sorry about my video is coming up and you can't see the meme. <laughs> but at least imagine there is a meme there. <laughs> and this is not how you do the SEO. <laughs> OK. So UI UX, okay, so our focus point is coming now. So what is basically UI and UX? Are they same, are they different? Most of the time it is confused with the same, but in reality, they are not the same. To explain UI UX in a single slide, it is this. A ketchup bottle that you see, that's your UI, but experience of opening that bottle is a UX. But you see with the glass bottle, you might have that issues, but with a plastic bottle in such a way you can do that easily, okay? So, and in the language that we speak, UI and UX is this. UX is what your user, how user get experience, and UI are all those elements, okay? See, a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not that good, right? And guess what? But reality is, most of the time, your user experience is this. Let me correct it. It's not design who is at fault. It's UI without any research is at fault. Did you consider all the cases yet? Did you even test it as a customer yourself? Maybe you'll find this path. Maybe you'll find the correct path. So my suggestion is think uh, take your business owner head aside and uh, get your user head on top. And then try to test your website. Or find a someone, uh, some your neighbor, maybe call your neighbor and show, show him your website or app. And let them test that and see how they are doing. You will get the idea. See, UX and psychology are correlated. Always think as a user. They are match made in heaven, right? Understand people, uh, what they do, why they do, how you can make their life easier, right? Conduct research, run workshop, analyze data, talk to stakeholders more often, and see uh, how your website is doing. And in the end, test, test, and test. You can do A-B testing, Hotjar, VWO, and see how your website is doing. But guess what? Most of the time, 
developers thought they made an amazing UI. And they assume that users are going to act in a certain way. They are, they, but there are different permutations and combinations like this. This is what happens. OK? So guess what, guys? Plan it out. UX is the key. A website, no matter how fast it is, if it is not usable for users, it's not worth it. Your users will go away any minute. And that's the harsh reality I'm speaking here. OK. Please test what you expect people to do on your website. Is it what is happening? Are you offering what they need also, right? You cannot have certain expectations from user. You need to test it. As I said, Hotjar and VW are nice tools. I would recommend. And looks like I have to stop this video. I don't know how to do that, but never mind. My, it, it's hiding my memes. <laughs> Anyways, most of the times, your clients don't understand that. This is what your clients are doing. The client, clients don't want what they need. You need to help them with the UX research. Guess what? Your UX is all about where you are, what your motivations are, experience, interactivity, how you feel. This is a nice website I would recommend. Guess what? This is how your UX sees it, and your client sees it, and your creator sees it. So this is different. Again, my meme is hiding. I don't know how do I take off this video. UX design is a bridge between your users and your business. Better user experience uh, make more users happy. Design fundamentals is a thing you need to follow for your website. I would recommend taking a look at what design fundamentals are. There is a, OK. Now, this is my favorite slide. See, COVID-19 happened. I need to put a slide about that, definitely. Somebody was telling me that UX design is easy. All you need to do is make things obvious for your website. Guess what? These are your everyday people. And speaking of masks, this is not how you should do it. You should do it in such a way. So similar to this, we can't expect our users to interact in such a way. This is your right case, but definitely your users are going to do step one, step two, and step three. I, have you covered all those cases? Please test. OK, UX design. I hate this video. I cannot move it anyways. Uh, sorry, I think I moved before. How can I? Ah, yeah. Something is wrong, guys. Today is my bad day. Anyways, <laughs> basically, all I wanted to say is, is your UX is your key. Like you saw this example. For your children, you might be like, oh, I'm showing them nice toys. But your children are seeing the view of what? Exactly. So think about that also. So now, in this part, I would like to talk more about um, uh, some examples. So. In this part, I've covered some examples, and I will be talking with you about that. Better user experiences means more happy users, right? Let, we're going to take a look at that. So shall we begin? In this list, I've compiled a few websites already, how they are doing, what they are doing, and how we can improve that. Let's start. Can somebody tell me what's wrong with this website? And does anybody recognize this website? That's mine, sorry. I can't seem to stop it. I'll see an option. Ignore my video for a second. You will see me here. Other than that, anybody? No? Does anybody heard of Deutsche Bahn? It's Deutsche Bahn's website, German rail company. Very famous. They're, they're famous for their trains, sure. Fa famous. OK. I'm using their example here. And can somebody tell me what's wrong on this web page? There's one thing that's just like, ugh. That is correct. In the hero image, there is one thing. You see a black color on a red background. It is just hurting my eye. I feel like, what the hell? <laughs> it's too red. So there's a thing called as fundamental of colors. So your user be you would behave in such a way like what kind of colors you represent your brand in. Red means too aggressive. So if you Google psychology of colors, you will see there's a list like what green means, what blue means, you know? And, and this is how your users react in such a way. 
Red is too aggressive, but the one thing that's wrong here is the black color on red image. That's so wrong. Okay, I was like, never mind. Let me click the login button. So I clicked the login button. The URL was barn.de. Then suddenly URL was changed to farcarton.barn.de. That's fine. Okay. Now what do I do? It took me a new domain. That is fine. Now I wanted to book my tickets. Okay. I'm like, let me click on the book tickets button. It took me to another domain, risekunst.bandee. Okay, that is also fine. I'm like, okay, I want to go to homepage. I don't want to book a ticket. I clicked on the homepage. Guess what? It logged me out. Is this the user experience we need to test, right? This is one permutation combination I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about another famous example, Facebook. Now you'll be like, what is wrong with Facebook? No, Facebook is fine. But there is one thing wrong here. Let me give you a hint. Not wrong, but an improvement, a UX improvement. Let me give you a hint. Form. Can anybody tell me what can be improved here? Label. That is correct. So as a user, when I'm entering my email address, label is off. And when I started typing my email, I forgot, or was there supposed to be a username or phone number? I have to delete it again and type it again. That's not good. But you know what? What's also not good? How Wikipedia is doing. It's a double label, a duplicate placeholder. So you have a heading on top, and there's a label on the form. That is also not good. You're showing duplicate stuff. But how can we improve it? I have a very lovely example here, which is Twitter. You see? In Twitter, when, you, when I enter, start entering my email address, the label goes on top. Perfect. Intuitive. And that's good. So that's called a floating label. That's, that's, that's slight user improvement, but why not? OK, let's see another example. OK, guys, so this is a, my uh, interesting one. So la, when I saw this uh, TV show called Money Heist on Netflix, or as you say in Spain, La Casa de Papel, right? You might, might have heard it. I was very curious about uh, like uh, Bank of Spain. So I was exploring their websites. I'm like, OK, this looks good, but this looks so cluttered to me, you know? Like, uh, I was checking, but that's, that was also fine. Let's ignore everything. So what is one thing that's wrong here on this page is this pop-up. So cookie pop-up. I was like, it says, if you click the configure button, you will access the cookie policy where you can change the settings, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, OK, I don't want to accept cookies. I'm, I'm living in Europe. I'm very focused about my uh, GD GDPR rules. So I click on the configure button. Guess what? It shows me some instructions. <laughs> it says, you can do this thing on Internet Explorer. You can do this thing on Safari, blah, blah, blah. I assumed that there would be some sort of checkbox, like you do it with OneTrust or any cookie management application. You expect this from Bank of Spain? Sure. That's why La Casa de Papel happening. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> So many steps. As a user, I would be like, I don't want to visit this website. I would just close it. Tada. Ciao. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, I went to the website of Bank of Austria. I just wanted to take a look how Austrian bank is doing. What is wrong here, guys? Can anybody tell me? It's a one big thing that's wrong here. It's pretty huge. Anybody? That aggressive red color and the text that's not even visible. What am I supposed to do? I have to be like that grandma that you saw in that slide. Huh? What is happening? <laughs> and guess what? I close the website. I take an exit. And, and you see this left navigation? That's also pretty, pretty, pretty small. I, am, I don't know what am I supposed to do here. OK, next example. Um, University of Spain, uh, sorry, University of Vienna, sorry, I'm in uh, Vienna, uh, talking about Vienna, sorry. So what is wrong here? Anybody? No? Okay. This navigation, it's pretty small, right side on top, not clear, and so many navigation items here. Maybe they could use a better navigation on top and put all the items there, right? So information is clear, they are a university. Okay, 
Now, let's see, we are in Valencia. Let's talk about University of Valencia. What is the issue here? Glad you asked. Everything. The navigation is too small, top navigation is too small, cookie box is pretty big, it's an overlay, and guess what? This, this is ugly. Oopsie. This is ugly. The navigation items are coming on your hero slider. Okay, never mind. I was like, let's check the mobile view. Maybe the mobile view is a little bit better. <laughs> why, do, why people, why? You can do a better cookie banners. It can be hidden. You can even put an error if you have a lot of text here, right? Okay, I'm like, that's also fine. But there was one more issue, which was the biggest of all. Speed. It was utterly slow. It's hidden. Time to interactive was 38 seconds for University of Valencia. 38 seconds. And you see the, your first contentful paint. The picture that was loading, it was 16.9 seconds. If somebody has a uh, University of Valencia in their contact list, please tell them. <laughs> they need a better web developers. And I forgot one more thing here. Uh, if you see on this slide here, there's a chat button on the cookie banner. In the chat, you're collecting the uh, user data. So you need to have user consent if you're collecting the user data. Chat should not work if there is a cookie banner. Once the user accepted the cookie, then chat should work. There's, another, there's a GDPR violation, if I'm not wrong. OK, next thing. Okay, so um, since I'm from India, I thought let's try an Indian website for the same thing. So this is the biggest um, news publication house in India called as Times of India. It was set up when Britishers were there, like around 150 or 200 years. It's a pretty old house, okay? I was like, let's see how they are doing with the cookie policy, okay? They are loading 65 cookies directly there. Okay, I'm like, that's fine also. but. There is another big thing which is wrong here. Can somebody guess what's wrong here? Yes, overlapping banner is a bad UX. So if you have a one banner, you're showing another banner on top. This is what I was talking about in slide one. Your users will throw your computer, throw their computer outside. Okay? And guess what? There is no option to disagree or even manage the settings. There's only accept button. Well done. Okay. Then I, since um, I'm from Germany, I was like, okay, I want to watch a movie. I went to a website of a movie portal, uh, called a movie theater. I'm like, okay, let's see what kind of movies they have. This Corona, ba this banner was pretty huge, pretty red, pretty ugly. All of course, my eyes are hurting. <laughs> I'm like, what do they want? Why it's so red? And guess what? In mobile, the situation was pretty worse. Also, when I exited it, there was another banner coming up. Okay. Okay, this is a pretty interesting example that I, I'm gonna use. I was like, never mind, I don't wanna watch a movie. I wanna listen to music. I'm like, okay, let me look, look for music websites. So I came across this uh, music portal, which is famous in India called Ghana.com. I'm like, okay. So it says, Ghana.com is asking for your consent. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I click on do not consent. It says, another banner. I did not consent, but why it's asking again? Okay. But still I'm seeing it. Okay. Guess what? I did not consent. Please notice here, there is an ad in the background. I, I said, I do not consent. They're showing ads. That's for one thing wrong. Second thing, I'm like, okay, I don't like that. I, I click on don't agree. It says, delete your data. <laughs> I did not agree. What kind of data did you collect which I need to delete here? I click on close button. I'm like, never mind. I want to, I don't want to do that. I click on this close button, okay? Then, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, I'm like, okay, uh, let me try to delete the data. Maybe they have something. Maybe Google is stealing my data. I'm like, okay, let's do that. When the hell I provided my email ID to them? Okay. But if you, 
I'm like, okay, never mind. Uh, let me close it. And let's see how far. I, I just wanted to test it. How far does it go? So I'm like, okay, I'm here for the first time. How do you know my email? But I close it again. I'm back to here. You sneaky. <laughs> okay, guess what? Guys, if you remember from the first slide, I did not agree to any cookies. How many cookies do we see here? 252 cookies. I did not agree to a single one. And I'm seeing an ad here. This is what you should not do with your websites, guys. Or not your clients. Please have some mercy on your clients. OK, guess what? Um, if I've cleared all the cookies, guess what? Before coming to this website, I cleared cookies of all, all the cookies on my browser, right? Now I'm like, I want to clear the cookies, but it's loading so many ad portal portals. As you see, we did not consent anything here. After struggling for so much, does your re users really want to listen to the song? Definitely not. Agree? Okay. So I'm like, never mind. I exit. Okay, so guys, these were my examples. Now I'm talking about a little bit about performance budget. Every company or every uh, client should have uh, think about performance budget. Uh, performance budget is what you think it is. It's kind of a budget you're doing, but for your page. So something like your page should not exceed this much size. You need to budget. You need to account for each and every scripts that you are loading, right? Uh, and you need to think about uh, basically all the possible solutions that you want to have for a website. So when you're budgeting, you plan it out, uh, do proper page load time check, mobile network check. If needed, you can do a mobile website also uh, for that or go for um, uh, PWA also. Okay, guess what? You will still have problems. And this is how we make the web faster, guys. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Questions? And this is how you can download my slides, by the way. So there's a link to my link tree. You will see an option there. Any questions, guys? Wow, I was so much clear. Oh, no, there's a question. Can you analyze my website, please? <laughs> yes, sure. I hope we have an internet here. Let me see if we have an internet. Next time, I think I need to do some sort of workshop about that. Do you, guys, do you have a uh, password for Wi-Fi or something? Yeah. Or any other questions meanwhile, until we figure out the internet situation? Yeah, I, one question. Okay, Sian. Um, when you talk about research, what kind of research? How can you do it? Um, when, you, when you talk about research, research to clients, they are, oh my God, now? Um, how can you do it? Actually, UX research is a pretty big topic. I did not cover it much because we do not have much time here. So about UX research, my suggestion is normally you figure out what your target audience is. So there's a thing called as uh, like you set your age groups, okay, uh, 18 to 25. I forgot the right word, but you need to uh, uh, say, okay, my audience is what? Uh, let's say my audience is a 23 year old guy who's sitting in a, I think persona, right word is persona. So think, uh, always prepare like a persona for your website. Who is your target audience? What they look like? What they may tend to do, right? So, and based on that, you plan your solutions accordingly. If you have to prepare, let's say if your audience is a B2B people or CMOs of a company who will pay you, right? Then you plan your uh, uh, content accordingly. Something like uh, you have resources that the people can download, you know? Always, always prepare your content based on your audience. Let's say your audience is a fast-growing teenagers who watch TikToks, then you, uh, your content should be not big. Uh, you, if you give them long articles, they would go away from your website. You should give them bite-sized content, maybe bite-sized blog articles, or something that your app can swipe left or swipe right. So uh, that would be uh, my idea. So 
one thing personas plan your content accordingly plan your website accordingly and in the end test test and test and in the end do the a b testing that is what one of my highest recommendation here you can also do user interviews here ux research is a pretty big topic i would say it's still not this it's this okay thank you very much all right so let's try to, uh, to analyze the website so uh, which one 5g Yeah? Yes. Okay. Anyone, any other question meanwhile? That's it? Wow. You guys know a lot already? Yes, please tell me. Um, thank you for the presentation. I think everyone hates these uh, cookie constant banners as you showed to us. During your presentation, I checked your website and you don't have them. I don't have them because I have a web development agency and I, you don't work on your yeah. own websites, right? So my question is, I, I thought that is a legal requirement. Uh, can we avoid these cookie constant no, banners actually, and cookie, be legal? Mm, cookie constant banner is a different topic of GDPR. So if you, are, if, you want your, if you have a customers from Europe, then, and if you have a visitors from Europe, right? then you need to focus on cookie concept better. You take the consent of those people before you're tracking them, right? Right now, I use this tool called OneTrust for all my clients' website or all the people I consult. So in OneTrust, it allows me to block all the scripts on the GTM level. Before the user accepts any cookies, uh, those scripts won't load. And once those scripts, that, that would make your website faster, that would also do like a GDPR compatibility. So these are the two things you would get Thank you. And, and it's a standard thing. If, you have, if you're a web development company, you don't work on your websites when you're working on your client's website. So I'm sure you, a lot of you agree with me here. OK, I think we have internet here. Let's see. I think I can present this one, hopefully. Can I? Uh, OK, I think I have a, ah, I can do. Uh, I, I see an option here called duplicate. There you go. Okay, tell me what's the website you want me to analyze. Si alguien lo pone en español va a ser más fácil, creo. Can you spell it for me? Sorry. Yeah, it, the, the, the word is in Spanish. I, you can write in Spanish? Yeah, uh, you have to tell me Spanish uh, here. Maybe tell him he can help me here. Oh, oh maybe you come here. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah, come here. Come on the stage, please. Let's do it together. Now, for the sake of transparency, I will use Firefox because I don't use Firefox much. For this test, let's use that. Okay? So, just telling you, please type your domain. Would be great. Yeah, you just remove it. Control A. Yeah, long type. Never mind. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, nine. Uh, still, image is changing. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> How many of you want to hear it? Okay, I will try to soften below. Okay, so let's start with. Uh, Web dev test. It's happening in background. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at the UX elements. So, run audit. Okay, first thing that's wrong is this image. It's changing the text again and again. Your users are not, I mean, this is too old school, like the marquee text or images that change suddenly. If you want, you should put like a nice, clear hero text. Your hero text should tell you what you would like to do here. Okay, so that's one thing here. Second thing, I don't like this effect. It's, it's a box shadow that's happening here. Okay, I can't seem to figure out what I have to do here. Okay, it looks like some sort of photo to me. I'm like, okay, let me click. 
do I have to scroll? Okay, what do I do here? Okay, it says so much text, something is wrong. Oh, I did something wrong. I don't know what is that. As a user, I don't know. So, please focus on clean UI, clean UX, clear content elements. Your content area is pretty much full right now. As a user, it's not clear to me though. Image titles are not clear. Okay, the header you're using brown color on the black background. Maybe you should use like a, some lighter colors here. It's not clear what it is supposed to do here. And looks like White uh, Lighthouse don't want to test it also. Let's test security headers also. Okay, let's try something else. I would like to see the blog. Okay, suddenly color changed. That's a shock, okay. Wow. Okay, um, filter, never mind. Okay, what is that? I don't seem to figure out, but never mind, I go here. Okay, I have to scroll this much here. Your content is not there, content is pretty small here. I would not show this much bigger featured image here. I would just start with this big title there and show the category tag a little bit there and just start the content immediately. You don't need a big featured image here. Featured image is for your, uh, good for there, but as a user, I have to scroll, one scroll, two scroll, three scroll, and then something comes. Now the text is too small. I'm likely to scroll it down. I don't get it. Please add some line height, increase your font size. It is not really clear. Okay, you're using a lot of images, that's good. Try to add some more spaces there also. Okay, that's it. What, what, what does it open? Did I click somewhere? I don't get it. it. Was there an ad on the website? I don't know how this page opened, I didn't open it. Oh, this. This is what you need to fix, please. 17, your time to interactive is 12 seconds. Oh, you don't, you're not responsive also. Okay, that's a big problem. That is a big problem. Hmm? Yeah, it's in. Yeah, it's not responsive. Please fix that. Do you want me to speak more? Okay, let's stop it here. Yes. Okay, Vinet. Thank you very much for your presence here again.